Okay. Philip Brighton's notes from a small island. It's 1995, and he is leaving his much loved place and home. Also, he was born in America. He was uh, and uh, went to Britain and is and went to his much loved home of uh, no, stupid like his much loved home of North Yorkshire before he moved back to his states, to the states, which I mean the USA, for a few years to be like with his family and stuff, and then go back to England or Britain or whatever you want to say. So that he goes back to his most loved country. So he does that. He does all that. And he decides to go on a tour around the country. And this book talks about all the little prospects and things that seem to have happened. Written. First of all, he goes to the place. And then he uh, doesn't know what to do. So he is stuck in the park. He sleeps there in the park. And boom, next day he goes to lodgings. Uh, he's stuck in the park because you know, like he tried to get some lodgings. But then that guy said, we're closed! And go and then ask and recommends this place, but then shuts the window like as if he's a bug or something. He goes there, but then realizes he probably can't pay for it. So afterwards, he just sleeps in the park. Next day, he goes ahead. And goes into lodgings and then some sort of things happen later on uh if you go into the book there is much more commentary and he literally gets angry with staff members at mcdonald's he orders like a little McMuff an egg mcmuffin and a cough a cup of coffee and then the waiter asking do you want a little apple slice with that and then bill was like do you think i ordered that do you think i would want that so stop asking so stop asking things that are unnecessary when people never ordered them and then the waiter's like a little confused and stuff and like i um uh i we're, we're just told to ask everyone that and like you literally think you had to order and like he goes on a mad rampage and then the waiter's a, a little uh confused and i guess a little scared and something i'm pretty sure he's scared but i'm pretty sure he's more confused and scared and later on he just gets the mcmuffin and the coffee i personally i would have ordered french fries and a hamburger. And now, I just remembered, that's morning, so they don't sell french fries and hamburgers in the morning, unfortunately. I wish they did. That would have been awesome. French fries for breakfast in the morning. Mm. I'm more, I, I think you would better eat McDonald's at lunch better, though. So, Bill Bryson's notes from a small island. Uh, continuing on, he uh, this is actually my favorite part of the story, though. It's at the end of the book, so I probably, probably speed it up a bit too much, but Oh, let me just say, he's in Glasgow, and then he goes to the cab driver, and then this happens. Uh, how should I do this? Oh, yeah, there you go, I found it. Uh, Glasgow, Glasgow, Glasgow. You need a long room, said the driver, as we sped along the motorway towards Pollock Park by the way of Clyde Bank and Alderman. I'm sorry, I said, I don't speak Glaswegian. Do you know that talk my funny? What? I hate when this happens, when a person of Glasgow speaks to me. I'm sorry, I said, I found it for an excuse. My youth's are bad. I and I had done a long run, he said, which I gather meant I'm going to take you a very long way around and look at you with these menacing eyes of mine so that you'll begin to wonder perhaps I'm taking you to this youth warehouse where friends of mine are waiting to beat you up and take your money. But instead, he said nothing further and delivered me a barrel without, in without incident. Yeah, I get Glasgow's not a bad place if you actually understand the language. And if you don't, and even if you get a Glasgow interpreter who thinks he's an interpreter, but actually you're like, ah, what are you saying? And he's like, what? You're dumb mummy. As if he's like an alien. That's not even English. Glasgowian English is weird. Also, funny, I'm pretty sure is funny. G and also, Diani, not many funny. I think that means, do you think I'm funny? And stuff. The, the Glasgow again is weird. I, I'll, I'll agree with that. Also, I probably hate it when someone like that speaks to me. It's like a Chinese person who hasn't speak, spoke English for 10 years but knows it fluently 10 years ago tries to speak English again. Something like that. I speak English every year. So that's a big plus for me. Remind me in an hour. Stonehenge.
Obviously, Stonehenge is a good place. In the 1970s, they let you go to Stonehenge and scratch out whatever you want. Like, I don't know. And the book, like, I love Dennis. Like, that was just an example. Or whatever you wanted to write in. Like, I love punk bands. Spider punk. Spider something. I got bitten by an ant. Ants are all over this me. I hate ants. I hate BB. Airbnb's awesome. Airbnb didn't exist then. It's nice, but then they had to close it. So now Stonehenge is like a little beauty of like triumph. Also, you can still see I Love Dennis or whatever. It's still there. Still scratched there. But Bison did a pretty good job representing and showing what Britain is like. It, he made it funny. He made it intriguing. He made it good. And he made it a little like something like, what? how should I say this? I'm annoyed. Annoying expression. So that's basically Bill Bryson's Notes from a Small Island. I, if you like this book, I also recommend his uh, sequel to this book, The Road to the Little Dribbling. More notes from a small island, and you can now guess what the small island is with a big fat British gentleman. If that's Bill Bryson, I am very sorry because I offended you, and uh, you do not look fat at all in your real life picture. You look, I don't know what to say. Oh, bye guys. Yay, 161 subscribers!